Good afternoon. Добрый день. Bonjour. So, uh, I think every, everyone here is uh, fascinated by the travel industry, the online travel industry, and we're going to go on uh, on this uh, wonderful uh, industry, fast growing, uh, in particular in Eastern Europe. Not only, but in particular. And we have wonderful guests today uh, with uh, Peter Kutis, uh, the uh, CEO of one to trip uh, one to trip is um, probably a rising star of the Russian uh, online travel market. They have just raised $9 million from Phenomenon Ventures, a brand new Russian fund. Uh, this was one or two months ago. Uh, we have Dmitry Yakovlev, uh, the uh, general manager. No, no, business development manager. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, business development manager of Ozone Travel. Ozone Travel is just, well, I wouldn't call it a rising star. It's already risen uh, because they were created in 2009 and they managed to become a very important, uh, considerable player on the Russian market in a mere one or two years. Uh, how much did you, did you generate in revenues last year? Uh, $108 million. Yes, $108 uh, so it's uh, already a big player. Uh, and Teodoro uh, D'Ambrasio. Uh, Teodoro D'Ambrasio works in TA Ventures, the organizer, the organizer of the wonderful event, and is also responsible for the development of Bravo Avia, which is the Russian brand of Bravo Fly. I'm sure you know Bravo Fly, the European leader in, um, in uh, low-cost uh, uh, flights. Uh, and they have launched Bravo Avia. Uh, it was uh, earlier this year or last year already? Mid of last year. Last year, yes. And I, you told me you had good results. Sorry? You told me you had good results? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Although on the, Russian, on the Russian market, there's no really low cost. It's medium cost. Well, we don't do only low cost. So we, you know, we, we basically try to offer the customer the cheapest solution, but it's not only low cost. <laughs> Okay, well, it's not your fault if it's not low cost. It's the market like that. Um, well, uh, to, start, to start with, I would like to ask you uh, about this paradox on the, on the Russian market and perhaps the other market of Eastern Europe. Uh, it seems that um, uh, flight uh, is dominated by local players. Uh, sorry? Peter is going to present to us uh, uh, one to trip. I think he has the right to do so because it's very new and very rising. So go ahead, present to us your company. Okay, my name is uh, Peter Kutis and I am CEO and founder of one to trip and uh, I would like to introduce, I would like to introduce you on one to trip online travel agency. And where is the first screen of my presentation? Okay, uh, milestones of o uh, OTT from a birth to amazing track record in a bit more than one year. Uh, we start beta version in April 15 in uh, 2011. And in August 30, 31, we uh, have a public start, and we are only 415 days on the Russian market. Uh, one to trip versus the biggest Russian uh, offline travel agency. This is our uh, year ticket sold dynamics per month. In August, we sold uh, uh, 91,300 tickets, and uh, this is like 40% uh, versus monthly sales of the biggest Russian offline agency. And this is our sales in online, 95% of our uh, orders, uh, our customers pay by credit cards. Uh, this is our sales mix, top five airlines, the biggest uh, airline Aeroflot, the second Uter, Transaira, Siberia Airlines, and Russia. Maybe we 
we are really global and 70% uh, uh, of our sold tickets it's international with international flights 30% is domestic uh, there are many OTAs it's and uh, only one one to trip we have the best prices we work uh, for you to save your money up to 20% uh, we tell you everything about your flight and you can pay directly to airlines let me share with you our instant stats on how we perform even you sleep for example our Pacific at seven miles on, in the year uh, the monthly we have uh, 15 million searches uh, daily we sold more than three thousand five hundred tickets and every minute we earn uh, 37 dollars net income and this is all almost zero spending of CEM and how big do you think you are? Uh, we are number one among OTA Rush in Russia and we are number two among airlines plus uh, OTAs in Russian market. Okay, thank you. Very short and very interesting. Congrats. Well, there are things like that in Russia. It's so growing, very exciting to be there now. Um, so, um, there seems to be a, a sort of paradox in Russia with um, uh, local players have succeeded in getting strong posi positions in the flight segments. But in the hotel segments, uh, international players seem to seem uh, still uh, to have kept their uh, leadership, even in Russia. So is it true and how can you explain it? And is it bound to, to remain so or to change? Uh, well, in Russia, there's uh, very many particularities which um, uh, standardized uh, international OTAs don't want to face. For example, there's a uh, local content JDS, which uh, accounts, for example, for 25% of our sales. Uh, the split between the flights is 50% domestic, 50% uh, international. Uh, to work in Russia, you absolutely have to support offline payment methods, like uh, payment in the uh, mobile shops, uh, cash-in terminals, electronic money, and this and that. Uh, also, you have to deal with Russian customers. You have to give uh, uh, full Russian support. Um, you have to officially proceed uh, you have to deal with tickets according to the Russian laws because maybe foreigners don't know, but in Russia all the tickets are refundable. There's no such uh, thing as non-refundable airline ticket. So that's just a more complicated market. Plus, uh, I guess the, for some time international players uh, were not taking this market uh, seriously. So they have uh, their websites translated to Russian and they think that's enough, but that's not how it works. Also, there's a particular thing you have to do marketing uh, in Russia. You have to do marketing with Yandex, you have to do marketing with uh, local um, meta search engines in Russia. So there's lots of particularities. So to start to work in Russia, to be leader in Russia, you have to heavily invest. Yes. I guess that's why. Except a one to trip who does no marketing on search engines. Yeah. We do it uh, without any uh, money. We don't spend any money to, to, to context advertising. Uh, we just started to, to, to try context uh, maybe two weeks ago only. Well, I think yeah, that's because uh, they do only meta search engines. But I see lots of limitations in this model. So well, I think there should be a healthy mix of the, of the channels from where you attract customers. And uh, that's the more strategic. Teodoro, you sell only flights, but still you're a very interesting example because by contrast with two other speakers, you are a Western company, Brother Fly, that, that has just localized yes, in yes. Russia. So well, how we, are, we are the second biggest European company in flight, and I think we are one of the few companies that enter uh, the Russian market with a local presence. International. Finally, others are some Greek companies. Yeah, yeah. exactly, except some Greek companies. And uh, while in, in, in the auto space, um, we have a 
extremely strong presence of Booking. So today the market is mostly dominated by Booking.com. And uh, it's interesting to understand how it's going to be in the next year, how the, you know, the local flight player will try to, you know, to take market share from the, from the strong domination of Booking.com. And uh, I think these guys are the guys that will have to try this challenge because you know, we are vertical on flights, but <laughs> you have the opportunity to, to move on and to see that Booking will not be the only leader in Russia. Absolutely, Booking is the number one e-commerce player uh, with uh, number two, I guess, being Aeroflot and maybe Russian railroads, which have sold seven million tickets online last year only. So uh, Booking.com, uh, which is dominating hotel space and suppliers are our main competitors. Um, what we're going to do about it? I think that uh, uh, our goal is to, we have all of us, we have a big uh, flight traffic. Uh, why flights? Because flights is a really simple product. It's uh, really easy to start with it. It's really simple product uh, in terms for consumers. They just come to the website. If they select the right flight, they buy it and that's it. It's not like with hotels which, where you have to make a huge research. You have to have uh, proper content. You have, have lots of contracts. Uh, so that's why we have all started with flights. But now I think um, Russian OTA's main goal is to learn how to effectively upsell all other, all other travel components to the visitors they have. And that's going to raise the, uh, the earnings that make, will make them more profitable. Because we, we know already how to effectively, like Peter does really effectively it with, uh, with search engines, we know how to do it with, with many channels, so we know how to effectively attract uh, flight customers. Now we should learn how to for free sell them uh, hotels and uh, maybe insurances uh, or transfers or car hire or cruises, something like this. Okay. Well, um, a little question about uh, new technologies, new approaches like mobile and social. Uh, this is a kind of disruption in uh, certain segments of e-commerce. Uh, does it play, uh, does it change anything particularly in, in, in your segment, mobile and social for instance? Well, as today most of the players um, have been using mobile and social just uh, uh, as another selling channel. Um, I didn't see any player to completely reinvent the model and, and, and change the user approach to find a, some new solution for, for giving real advantage to the traveler. So I think that next year we will expect from some new startups or new model that should completely redefine the start of traveling. Because as for today, most of the sales generator is still, you know, flight player selling through mobile to their application, and hotel player selling to their application. And I, I think that mobile can give much more than this. And uh, so we are ready to look forward to see what can be the, 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 the next thing change in the model. I absolutely agree, and uh, uh, I think the socialization of users, uh, it's, uh, at, when every, everyone is connected through Facebook or VKA, despite bring uh, like a naked guy on the Red Square, and you, if you have uh, the not so good service, uh, the first of uh, your customer who have a trouble with your, with your service uh, will Ну, сейчас как запутался, как на английском сказать, ребята, сейчас секундочку. You should be really careful, Peter. Want to say that it was, but for me, mobile. Uh, let me be here a bit uh, orthodox. For me, mobile nowadays, this go mobile uh, slogan is like uh, 14 years ago. Go online. Like 14 years ago, everybody was talking, hey, you have to have an online business. And the business was thinking, okay, we do website and the money will just flow to us. That's nothing needed to do. Just we put a website uh, and that's it. We will just have a cash. No, you go mobile, do lots of work, uh, and maybe do have lots of losses, rearrange, and only, that, uh, only after that you have money. Will the people start to book mobile from mobile only in five years time? No way, because they're yet not uh, booking only online. 
and they will never be. So the same thing with mobile. They only start to book from mobile all the time only if the whole computers will switch off tomorrow. That's not going to happen. So mobile strategy is something uh, where you should understand in which uh, trip uh, planning, uh, in which place of the trip planning cycle you are targeting the customer. Are you targeting the planning, uh, planning phase, booking phase, post trip phase, customer service phase? And you should really understand why you do your application. You should really understand how you're going to market your application, how you're going to support it, will you, uh, which platform you will use. Because uh, everybody is speaking about iPhone, but in Russia, this is Symbian still uh, and Android. You do only iPhone app in Russia, you take only, I don't know. 10-15% of the market. Yes, it's an elite product here. Um, in, uh, regarding uh, the hotel segment, um, do you think that uh, new models could uh, come from the outside and, 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 uh, and uh, also have a kind of disrupt disruptive effect like Airbnb? Uh, do you think it can uh, uh, change a lot of things in, 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 in this uh, uh, hotel industry and the online booking of it? That's a bit funny question for us. We do flights mostly. So that's the better ask booking.com what they think about it. Ozone uh, is only flight? Ozone uh, well, we do. Of, we, well, we like to see ourselves as Expedia of Russia, the multi-service agency which already um, offers customers a full range of service to plan and organize uh, their trip. But of course, um, Tickets, which are airline tickets and train tickets, combine 95% of our sales. So, of course, we're still a ticket agency. Flight plus uh, train. Uh, regarding Airbnb, there's so many problems uh, serving the customers who booked the, uh, this kind of accommodation. I know Booking.com uh, this year in Berlin, the new vice president said that no way he's going to put it in his inventory because he just don't want to kill the profits with the customer, co uh, customer service cost. I would believe the professionals. So that's uh, buzzwords, but uh, you should understand how you're going to earn with on this. I don't see, uh, it's quite complicated still. There's so many problems with the customer service. You, the customer came, there's no one who can give you the, uh, the key or the flat is already rented. What are you going to do with this customer? Accommodate it on your own? Well, that's not really business. So it's maybe another very different kind of business. Yeah, it's question. very different kind of business. It's risky in Russia uh, and in Ukraine to stay in someone as a flat. So I don't, know. I don't see the big movement in this area in our countries in the near future. Okay, so let's uh, say good luck to the representative of Airbnb. Yeah, sure, sure. In this event today. I, I'm always happy to be wrong. No uh, problem. I mean the representative for Russia, if Russia is not a perfect country for that. Um, Theodore wants well, to add Yes, I, I'm, I was just to add that today Russia, you know, is still an emerging market. So it's one of the big market and most of the player, the big player, uh, most of the big player are still focusing on proven model. So um, I don't think we will see much innovation from Russia in the travel space. I still believe that most of the innovation will come from the US and eventually from the European market. Okay. Well, uh, perhaps more direct and potentially more worrying uh, type of competitor for you uh, are search engines with Google Flights. And um, is there something similar in? Uh, do you feel as, a, as a, do you feel it as a threat in Russia? Does Yandex do, do similar things? Perhaps. Okay, я прокомментирую только на русском быстро. Я извиняюсь, конечно. По поводу Google и и и Software. So I will translate. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, я не считаю, что Google при, после покупки ИТА uh, делает попытку выхода на, на рынок OTA. ИТА. ИТА Software. ИТА Software. ИТА. ITA Software. ITA, yeah. oh, no. uh, uh, after um, uh, Google bought uh, ITA, 
есть мнение, что да, он пытается выйти на рынок, ну, пытается выйти и стать полноценным OTA. Yes, it seems that there's an uh, uh, opinion that they try to become a full-fledged player on this on this travel segment. Но, скорее всего, это не так, потому что для того, чтобы быть полноценным OTA, нужно делать полноценную поддержку пользователей. Sorry, to be the to be the full scale LTA, you have to do the full scale service support. Единственное, на что они могут ориентироваться, это быть метасерчером. So the logical strategy for Google is to be a meta search engine. И они могут быть лучшим на этом рынке. Yeah, they can be the best. So I completely uh, agree with Peter in this case. Uh, I think uh, meta search engines should uh, fear Google, not uh, the OTAs. Like if we see what Google flights now in the America, uh, where OTAs are scared, it's because there's only um, uh, fly, uh, air companies there participating, no OTAs still participating. Well, because it's this in, a, in a better stage. That's why there's only um, only f uh, air companies because it's complicated to sell interline flights. There's low costs, so when he will be decide to become a full-scale meta search, he'll have to integrate everyone. And the main question for them is uh, how they gonna do the split between the context advertisement and the co and the advertisement in uh, in Google Flights. So I don't think it's a threat. I think it's opportunity. And we'll see what happens. Yandex is our partner in Russia. They have the meta search engine, and we participate. Well, um, I mean, both Google and uh, and both the OTA are providing a searching service first of all. So in this case, we're we're kind of doing one of the, of the of the part of the job that is the same. So what Google try to do is, of course, to increase their profitability, trying to deliver the search instead of the OTA. So that's what we're moving forward. It's a big discussion in the US. Um, ETA software acquisition was blocked up by the antitrust for more than nine months. And um, now the acquisition is completed, but Google still um, is, is trying to deliver uh, to, the, to the OTA and to the, to the flight partner uh, adjust more detailed results. Of course, getting much more money for the click that before was cheaper. Uh, it's doing the same also in the hotel. It's moving slowly in, uh, in, the, in the hotel sphere. The question here for the non uh, the market that are not led by Google, for example, like Russia, where Yandex is a market leader, is what Yandex is going to do. So maybe Yandex will use the same model but develop in a different way, and in this case, it could be you know big uh, conflict with the OTA. Judging from the existence of uh, ticket.yandex.ru, where they have a meta search engine, they will make the similar steps. Uh, but I also think Yandex will provide the search leads that we continue to be lead generator because to just uh, imagine five percent of uh, tickets sold is the uh, will are refunded or, or or returned so you have to process this and that's a major uh, major cost uh, where the, all the costs are appearing for the personnel so that's a major trouble so Nowhere Google wants to deal with this. Maybe I don't know. They will buy Expedia and <laughs> just well, joke. Consider, consider that uh, um, the OTAs are the basically second biggest customer for Google because the first one is in the financial services. So I don't think they want to spoil the relationship with the bigger customer. Well, um, this market uh, in uh, Russia uh, is one of the most competitive, this market segments in the field of the Russian internet and e-commerce. There are already very big players. Um, uh, Peter, you have just raised nine million from a Russian fund. Uh, we heard that anyway, any day is seeking 40 million dollars. Ozon uh, has raised 100 million. That's the biggest uh, deal in the yes. Russian internet. Which yes, and, and how year. much? How much of this 100 million went to Ozone Travel? No, I approximately? can't tell you, of course. <laughs> no, can't disclose you that. <laughs> well, it's big money. Uh, so, uh, does a newcomer have a chance? Be it a Russian player, a local initiative, or a foreigner that would try to to localize his site, like Bravo Avia did one year, what, did one year ago. Well, um, it's one of the most competitive because it's one of the most developed. 
So today, I think that the travel market in Russia is probably the biggest e-commerce, or representing one of the biggest chunk of the e-commerce. Um, still, the market is, is not developed compared to the European countries to the US countries. So only by the natural growth, there is obviously space for newcomers. Uh, I think that the market will not be stable or comparable to the European one, uh, one in, in less than five, six years. So by that time, I, I'm pretty sure that many new players will come and the market will have a different fragmentation that, from the one that is today. Yeah, we were behind the scene, we were calculating with Teodoro how big is the flight market in Russia. We counted it's around $4 billion will be this year. Yeah. For, yes. for the online part. Yeah, for only for airlines. But imagine, uh, this means only 10%, 10 to 15% penetra online penetration, which is lower than Asia, uh, lower than uh, Latin America even. Uh, then uh, also it, we have only under 50% uh, internet penetration in the country. We have a flights which are growing 20, 30 percent, airlines are growing, uh, air airline carrying the passengers is growing 20, 30 percent per year. So we'll see for many years room for the organic growth and for double digit organic growth for three, five years to come. I don't know, five maybe too much, but for three definitely. And so there's a place for new players, there's a place for existing players and there's a place for foreigners in this market. Uh, it will be for some time. Um, the main question is what we're going to do in three, five year time. So how we learn to earn money not only on flights. So for us, it's uh, auxiliary services. So hotels, insurance, car hire, and, and these kind of things. So for us is to learn how to effectively sell other stuff. Uh, and uh, regarding the, are, are we scared that uh, foreigners will come here? Well, Booking.com is once again number one player in uh, Russian online travel market. Expedia existing here for a long time. Expedia has lots of affiliates, so they're existing in B2B market. Hodels.com is an active player, so they're already on the Russian market. And so we're already leading. And uh, anyway, if you look at the Europe, you'll see that there's a couple of global or, or pan-European leaders, and then a big row of uh, successful local players from five to 10, depending on the country and the size of it. That's the thing. Dim. Ну, я считаю, Дима мне поможет. Okay. Я считаю, что роста нам еще за дело раз в 10, наверное, есть на ближайшие Peter, лет. Peter estimates the growth that we can grow 10 times more from the current state. И по отелям вообще мало кто серьезно работал на, на русском рынке. Yeah, and there's no foreign competitors who seriously work in here, in Russia. И я думаю, в ближайшие три года ну, действительно могут появиться новые игроки и могут появиться новые продукты у существующих игроков, очень серьезные, и которые будут делать серьезную конкуренцию для того же Booking.com. And uh, in three years' time there'll be new players and new products of, from existing players which will uh, rise the competition for the Booking.com also. Okay. Hey? Well, do you think uh, ru the Russian market could come to similar, become similar to uh, some Western markets with three players uh, dominating with 70% of market shares? I believe it, it's a bigger market, so there is space for more players. Um, the question today is how the market will change, so uh, how the hotel market will develop, because today it's roughly 20% is a local market and 80% is international for the hotels. And uh, how the, the flight market will develop. Today in Russia, we don't have a strong presence of a low-cost carrier. Many low-cost carriers are entering, slowly entering the Russian market. Um, in Ukraine, even more than Russia, literally. Um, this, for sure, will be a, you know, a game changer for, uh, for, uh, for, the, for the consumer and for the OTAs. Um, another game changer will be uh, the relationship between the airlines. Today in Russia we still have you know, several airlines uh, contributing and supporting the revenue of the OTA, while in Europe uh, most of the airlines don't, don't, uh, you know, don't contribute any fee to the OTAs. So I think this, this will, in the next three years, it's gonna, there should, will be some change. 
and it's going to affect the OTAs and, and the model, the OTA approach the customer. Well, in other areas and in travel area, Russian is falling behind like five to ten years um, in e-retail, in e-travel. Um, we, we are catching up. So I guess uh, that we, the situation will be more similar to Europe in, uh, soon enough. Um, we are moving this way. So I agree with Teodoro that there's the airlines will, will reconsider their policy and will cut the commissions and start to develop um, their own sales from the websites. But the, it's once again, it's Russia. It's already a, a mixed situation. Um, the leading uh, governmental companies are already the main players on the, in online travel. And uh, we are actually eating up their share and share of offline players. But then still there's second uh, tier players and third tier players, w which is hard to predict which way they move. Towards the direct sales or they will continue uh, keep high commissions for OTAs. So it, it will be some mixture of the European pass with the, as usual, Russian, Russian flavor. Something will be different, but most of the things will uh, go the same way they have went in States and then in Europe. But I think also, as Theodore said, we'll have more, more players, uh, because in, in this way we'll be more similar to Europe than to States, where four players dominate completely the market. We'll have up to 10 players, significant players, and the shares will be, uh, they, they will have the main share. So we are showing you here the um, turnover last year of uh, the main, the biggest players on the Russian market in the travel segment. These est estimates are from uh, the e-commerce report that we at East West Digital News have just released. Uh, and um, so RGD is the uh, Russian railway company. It's of course uh, uh, the biggest player of all. Um, then you have several airlines company. There's Aeroflot, S7, and Transaero. Uh, and uh, the two sites that might be the most relevant uh, for comparisons in our discussions are anywayanyday.com and Ozone Travel. So uh, this is 108 million that you said <laughs> a few minutes ago. The figures are there. Of course, uh, you have to take this these figures very cautiously because, uh, well, they're more or less accurate. That's okay, but they change very fast. Uh, this year, it will be, how much will it be this year? Plus 100%? Uh, two and a half times, I think, it will be something like okay. this. We'll see in the Plus end of the year. Plus 150% yeah. probably this year. So, uh, and, how, and by comparison, uh, what is the turnover of, of big Western players here? Uh, what, what is the order of magnitude? Oh, Expedia. For instance, a big uh, Western uh, railways company or a big Western air, and air, air ticket uh, site? Well, I Expedia, according to the Focusrite report, is, is behind, uh, behind anywhere, any day in uh, ozone travel. And Booking.com is somewhere higher. So Booking.com is something, I don't know, it's hard to estimate. There's no data. But they, they're, they're the main player. So they're somewhere close to, to Aeroflot. Between Aeroflot and S7. But if we take their global, uh, their global uh, orders of magnitude, well, the Expedia, for instance, how much is it? I think it's six, six billion. Six last billion. year, six billion last year, global. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, booking for much more, I think. But I don't remember the figures exactly. И я бы хотел поправить эту табличку. Okay. Peter wants to mention Данные по поводу Аэрофлота немножко другие. Они продают от 60 до 70 миллионов долларов в месяц. Они, и это не делали этот оборот еще в 2011 году. Вы можете просто умножить 60 на 12, это будет не, не, не как... So Aeroflot, according to Peter's data, Aeroflot is comparable to RGD. So да, Aeroflot even намного more. крупнее и вообще звучит, когда ЖД больше, чем авиа, по обороту это очень странно. It can be, because this, they sell 7 million tickets last year, and it's with average ticket price around 100 dollars. That's, that's a proper figure. Да, ну и в этом году многое что поменяется. Yeah. Пришли мы. There's lots of fast changes, yes, definitely. In this, this table will be completely different this year. Okay, then. 
Uh, there's one last question. There's a concept that, is, uh, uh, that works uh, rather well, as far as I know, in many countries, but that does not exist so far in Russia, or is not very visible on the market. Uh, it's the uh, flash sales and flash discount concept, like voyage privé. Uh, has it been tried in Russia or not? And uh, why isn't it... Uh, uh, hasn't it been developed? Like, for instance, uh, Oscar Hartman developed Coupe Vip for other flash sale products very successfully. I think there are, there are a couple of companies on the Russian market. Um, to be honest, I don't know if there is any company that achieved big number. I mean, of course, if you mention Coupe Vip, you know, you're talking, a, you know, with a company that achieved big results. Uh, I thought there were, were a couple of companies in the Russian market starting from Ostrobok, started model and then made a pivoting on, uh, on Booking.com model. Oh, Ostrovok started trying it, yes, but they switched yeah, they tried to it a hotel yeah, model. They started a flash well, sale and they made, yeah. then they, they made a pivoting on, on the Booking.com model. Yeah, flash sales in Russia exists in the physical goods market, but uh, since the whole hotel market in Russia is really small, you can't do flash sales on the flights if you're agency. Uh, airlines, of course, can do flash sales. So we did, for example, flash sales with Air Baltic. We have the exclusive uh, fare. We send it out only to our customers uh, with the email. They had two days to book, and, and that's what we did. But uh, mainly it's done with packaged holidays and with uh, hotels. But packaged holidays in Russia are 100% offline. Sorry, trail menu. Uh, and uh, the hotels are... The, to do it for hotels, you have to have the big inside travel market. Uh, a Russian inside travel market for hotel travel is just really small. It's mainly business travel, which is also sold offline sold offline or with direct contracts with two hotels. So there's, there's no big demand for hotels. And for outside contracts, for outbound travel, hotel travel, you have to have uh, uh, also contracts with international players. There's just no company who is uh, aggregating international hotels, which is Russian company in aggregating international hotels to sell it for Russians. So that's the answer. Like uh, Hotwire uh, and uh, Last Minute, they do it with their own contracts. We just don't have a company who has enough contracts to sell in this way, and enough uh, customers to to be sold this that they would have to this process to sell too. I think that's the reason. Well, exactly. Consider that before we try to estimate um, what is the hotel market inbound and outbound. I mean, while the flight market is roughly 50% of international flights and, and local flights, uh, we assume that, I mean, this is our estimation from the data that we see from our booking, our request, that the hotel market is below 20%. So this, of course, is a, you know, is a, is a small chunk and doesn't give the opportunity to, to develop um, a, a, a strong network with a big proposal of offers. No, no, no. На самом деле на, наш, на, на рынке тревела никто еще серьезно не экспериментировал с такими с подобными продажами. Yeah, Но я думаю, что на самом деле существенные скидки до 50% можно давать, если научиться продавать воздух, который перевозит авиакомпании, например. Yeah. So, Uh, no, I forgot the word. Например, S7 24% недозагрузки в среднем по году. For example, S7 has really low occupation numbers in a flight like 24%. So. 24% воздуха. У Transair 17, у Aeroflot 13, так что на этом рынке можно поиграть во флеш игры. Yeah, but you can do what you have to have an airline as a partner anyway. So I guess when we have hotels or some other, I have 20 seconds, uh, or some other content, uh, then we'll do this. Otherwise, we are working as agents, so we are just uh, intermediaries. So we really much depend on others in this case. Well, thank you very much for these uh, insights into your market segments. Uh, our speakers are available for questions and discussions in a more private atmosphere in the TA Venture Lounge. You can see them in a few minutes, we're going there. You can also see, pl read plenty of articles and news and analysis on East-West Digital News on these issues. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.